this is Two Men and a Bolt. I am Mike, I'm from the Solutions team here at Quadra, and Matt is our technical whiz kid. Say hello, Matt. Hello. <laughs> what we're doing here is uh, relatively freestyle. We're keeping it short and sweet. We have a basic rundown of the vault itself, uh, focusing on some of the pain points and questions that we've had in historical meetings with customers and the main focus on that being to identify with those pain points. It's about saving time for engineers and people connected to the design engineering workflow. I'd rather be designing stuff and out spinning things with a space mouse and old shiny gubbins yeah, exactly. than uh, looking at a bit of documentation and trying to find files that uh, I know I drew it last week but I don't know where I put it. Yeah. Way of flow roughly is we've got a couple of scene setting slides as I've called them and a bit of a show and tell leading off from that with Matt then we'll lean away from the demo side of it if you like and look at what's new in the 2018 version of Vault because there are a couple of good little snippets in there for uh, people to pay attention to and finally we'll look at an announcement that Autodesk made as of first thing this morning uh, with regards to the Vault, uh, Vault Pro. We're going to go straight in with the pain points and the questions that come up during the workflow day-to-day -day running with engineers basically and these are the questions that they're kind of being asked. And this hasn't just come from me, this has come from a combination of me, the external guys, Matt, our tech directors put a fair few into these as well. We can't find the file, we've manufactured to the wrong file, manufactured to an older version, that's come up a, few, a fair few times. Has the change been implemented yet? Can we give appropriate access permissions to the data at the appropriate time? Who was it? You know, we need to make sure, obviously, if there are any issues, it's not a case of blame, name and shame, it's a training issue, we need to identify who it was, when it was, and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Who's changed the part? All, all, all these questions that keep getting raised. And this name leads on, this can be translated into, effectively, questions, proactive questions that come from driving the vault. Um, well, same bubbles really, but just translated into, instead of I can't find the file, where is the file? So if you're driving the vaulted environment or looking proactively when the design engineering environment, where is the file? How do I record the change as complete as I'm working? Have I got the correct file as I'm working? Will the change affect other design files? So preempting those sort of questions, all of these things really if you're using something like Vault's main competitor really at the moment, seen by most as being Windows Explorer, it's an electronic filing cabinet, but it's not designed to handle design data. Mm -hmm. So what happens to those design files and those design data files? In the Windows Explorer environment, how does it compare? With AutoCAD files, it's it used to be a relatively straightforward process. You've got one file, it's got a sheet, it's got a series of uh, mini sheets attached to it on the bottom tabs. You look at 3D parts, assemblies, sub-assemblies, then into general arrangements. Every part could have a multitude of drawing files, PDF documents for regulation approvals. One file is used in many different places. Yeah. Uh, one assembly uses many different files. Yeah. A whole spider's web of links. Your DWG, I think, is, to all intents and purposes, a flat file. It can represent a simple bracket. It can represent a model of the entire city centre of Accrington. Mm. Uh, it might be a big file, but it, you know, as a rule of thumb, it tends to be pretty flat. Yeah. It's all or nothing. But with your inventor file, a part file is a bracket, is a plate. Uh, an assembly file is a combination. Uh, and the trick, the difficulty always is, um, where's it used? I can always find out what it uses. The drawing will tell me that it uses the assembly. Mm. The assembly will let me know quite easily that it uses parts one, two, and three. But six months down the line, looking at somebody else's design, I've got no idea that part four, what drawing is it on? Mm. What assembly is it used on? If I make a change to this part, am I going to break everybody else's drawings and assemblies? Yeah, and it's the everybody else's bit that's important as well. Because yeah. if you are, if you are, Joe Person, single engineer. Joe Person. Uh, yeah. Nice. Joe Blogs, a that's person. Better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody that's basically got single user on his machine with the inventor installed. Yeah. That's not that's not that's not too bad necessarily. You can kind of keep track of your own stuff. Keep track of your own 
files, parts, links, and dependencies between the files, assemblies, yeah, sub assemblies. Might take many. you a bit of time, mine, but you know, nobody's exactly. going to come in and pull the carpet from It's not it. automated and you've no traceability. Where it really comes into its own, I suppose, is when you're looking at anything that's two plus, <coughs> two plus users. Yeah. Um, people have their own leave breaks, you know, on, on site at different times, other yeah. people need to work on the files that this person's been working mm -hmm. on, and what happens when yeah. people yeah. start opening up other people's drawings. Saving them, overwriting copies of them, cut and pasting rather than copy and pasting. Mm -hmm. We've seen that done before. Things when move, you... wasn't where I left it. Yeah. Mike's come along and broken it again. Exactly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as you can see, an example there on the screen, it's not just DWGs anymore. It's DWGs, it's GIFs, BMPs, JPEGs, STLs, DXFs. I can shout TLAs and FLAs till I'm blue in the face. There's a multitude of different files that connect to these. Anything that you can put into Windows. You can put into Vault. Yeah. Well, Vault will have a good understanding of all your Autodesk CAD files, your inventors, your DWGs, your AutoCAD stuff. It's got a pretty good understanding of your Microsoft Office, so Excel, Word. It actually has a Vault add-in. Mm -hmm. um, it has, I don't want to say no understanding, but it doesn't have a, an in-depth understanding of a text file other than showing you the text. It doesn't have an understanding of what's going on inside uh, a bitmap, but it will show you the picture. Uh, anything that you can put into Windows Explorer, be it uh, a software package today or something that hasn't been invented for 10 years, um, if you can save it to a hard drive and Windows Explorer will show it you, Vault mm. will uh, will work with that file. Mm. Because people have you people use Windows Explorer at the moment, and a lot of this purpose of this webinar is to target those individuals, but also the people that use Vault Basic to explain what's available in the upper echelon, the upper levels to it. The people who are using Windows Explorer use it because it's what they're used to. It's free. It's, word it's processing there. File. It's built in. Yeah. It's not designed to maintain the links and dependencies between all the bits and bats. Exactly. If you compare that to what Vault would look like as a metal filing cabinet, you'd have your sheets of paper in your folders, in your four drawers, mm -hmm. or your two drawers, whichever one you've got, but there will be hundreds of, maybe thousands of pieces of string linking each of those pieces of paper to each other yeah. in various drawers, cabinets, files, sheets that show when you pull one sheet out yeah. it brings the rest of it out correctly at the right release in the current version so you know you're working on that one version of the truth that everything that's checked out with that part or assembly that you're working on. Yes. There you go. So just in summary then quickly design engineering challenges, searching for recreating misplaced data, these are common issues Searching, copying, chasing, moving, tracking, second guessing, and investigating. Copying similar designs into a new project, because that's something else that Vault can do, is a, a, you know it bridges that pain point gap of people being able to en masse move associated parts and assemblies into a new project because a similar project has come up with the same customer or somebody different that they can reuse that data very easily whilst creating unique part files to be able to trace those new parts and the sub-assemblies against a new project, yeah. as opposed to duplicating work files between different projects. Might take me a month to produce the first project, yeah. full set of documentation, uh, drawings, assemblies, all the, all the associated stuff. Um, customer comes along, I would like another one of those machines, please, same but different, Yeah. six inches wider. Give me by five o'clock, please. Yeah, um, with Vault, we can take uh, the existing project and basically do a copy design. All, all the length components for this machine will stay the same, they get reused. Yeah. All the width components, because it's six inches wider, will create new drawings and new parts, but the, the software will create the part, it will relink the new files in the background. So, out the other end, in 10 minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it takes, you've got a new project that's documented up to the same spec if you like as the, the one that you've just spent a month on yeah. but you got there in five minutes yeah. then you can spend your time manipulating and tweaking the design for the width stuff and, and you know updating the assemblies but you could get out the door within a couple of days the second project yeah. based off the first one that might have taken you a month yeah that point chasing approvals next one uh, basic version of vault includes version control which tracks the versions of a file that's the history get, yeah moving data between different folders Tracking early revisions. So yeah. I think it's probably best at this point. Dive straight into it. I've been chuntering on for about ten minutes more than I should have done. I yeah. think uh, Matt's got the vault loaded up. 
We're going to look into the vault side of things now, aren't we, Matt? So yeah, we are. Question. Um, I'm going to state the obvious first of all. Let's um, the, the one document management system that everybody's got. Windows Explorer. Yes. It gives us enough information. Only just, but it gives us enough information. We've got the folder structure, we've got the file type, and we've got when it was saved. So I know that that file's called box IPT. It was saved on the 24th of November, um, roughly about dinner time, and it's an inventor part file. Fantastic. But it doesn't tell me where that box IPT is used. I'm going to use that as part of my current design, and I'm going to drill a great big hole through the middle of it. But what happens if that box is already used on 14 other assemblies? All of a sudden, bridges start falling down and aeroplanes start falling out of the sky because we broke the other design. Yeah. Um, what I need to do is find out where it's used. If all I'm doing is adding the chamfer to the edge to stop people cutting themselves on a sharp corner, I can probably do that to every occurrence of that box, that IPT. But if I'm doing something a bit more meaningful, changing the design intent of it, uh, I've got to make sure that I'm only changing it for me and not for everybody else. Uh, Windows Explorer will tell me what it is and where it is, but not a lot else. It won't tell me what it uses. It doesn't tell me where it's used. It'll allow me to copy and paste. We've all done that, Control c Control v but I don't know that that box is on a drawing, so I have to copy the drawing, and then I've got to open the drawing and change the reference to reference the new box file. So there's three lots of work for every file that I copy. Um, I can move the file quite easily, drag and drop, and I've got a reasonably good chance of Inventor catching up with that, so long as I move the file within the scope of the current project. If the file isn't in this folder, it might be in that folder. Oh, there it is. I'll go and grab it. Everybody's happy. Yeah. Right. But if I move the file um, outside the scope of the current project, Inventor's got no chance of finding it. So moving stuff, you might get away with renaming files. You are going to cause yourself problems, because the drone is looking for box.ipt. It is not looking for cube.ipt. It'll never find it. Now, if I've just renamed the file and then I open the drawing, I can remember what I did 30 seconds ago, I'm okay. But if I'm working in a, a, a drawing office that's got 25 people and we're all moving and renaming files all the time, the problem there is I don't know what Mike did to that file last week when he renamed it and moved it to a different location. Last week, last year, you know, we're in trouble. Mm. I can't find box.ipt. I don't know who to ask to find out who changed the name to and what they changed the name to. The other thing about Windows Explorer, there's no traceability. You can set security up to allow um, read only or read and write, delete some modifications, but you can't track who deleted it, whom or who modified it. So you know it's changed. It's not the one I used last week, but who changed it and why did they change it? As a set of files, what we're working on today is fairly simple. It doesn't represent anything that any of the, any of the attendees on this webinar make. I, I'd like to think that you all make something a little bit more complex. I have a drawing. I've saved it. I know that this drawing contains references to various things, like references to an assembly. Inventor will tell me that that assembly then contains sub-assemblies, which in turn contain components. So I can track my uses quite easily with Inventor. Um, what I don't know without looking at the drawing as I am now, if I've opened up the box derived IPT in its own right, I've got no clear indication of where it's used, what parts, what assemblies, what drawings it's used on. So which is why we use Vault or a document management system. This is at this point a document management system. We're looking at managing CAD files. Vault Basic, it ships with the product. You've got a copy of it for every copy of the inventor and it'll look after the files for you. But it doesn't do much beyond that. The files themselves, it's all well and good having access in the drawing office to that file, but we wouldn't have access to it um, in other departments within the business. That's where you, your, your higher levels of Vault Work Group, Vault Professional will come in because they're a licensed product. Anybody can fire up Vault Work Group if you've got a license and uh, access, view, manipulate the data if you've got the rights and privileges to do that. Yeah. Purchasing, mm -hmm. could have a copy of it, and they could then query the Vault mm -hmm. and the shop floor could access it and print their own drawings. Yeah. Well, first thing we need to do, we need to check the files in. We need to make Vault aware of the files. Checking in, similar to what we do in the 1950s, you create a drawing, then you go and put it in a drawing cabinet when you finish with it. Now tomorrow morning, when you want to do something on the shop floor, want that, they never get the original, because that's locked away under lock and key. They get a copy, they get an ammonia copy, a blueprint, mm. that they can do with what they want, 
But by copying or placing these files into the vault, we basically locked it away and we've recorded, snapshotted the design, the data at that point in time. Yeah. It's now secure. I can never get hold of that original data, but I can get as many copies of it as I want. So over in the vault world, looking at the server itself, we can now see we've got the design folder, simple project, we've got the drawings are listed there, we've got some more information. Vault's based on the look and feel of Outlook. So if you can send an email, you can drive Vault. Mm. Paraphrasing it slightly, but that's the gist. Down the left hand side, we've got our folder structure, which is our inbox outbox, dead simple. And then at the top, we've got a list of emails, we've got a list of files that are in our our vault and at the bottom you've got the information about the email itself, the text, the information about the files. So clicking on the drawing there we can see a history, we've got a thumbnail, we know what we're looking at before we have to open it up. Uses, this is a drawing, it uses the general arrangement assembly which in turn uses two separate sub-assemblies, each of which use their own parts. The primitive derived assembly uses the box derived part and there's a part file which is usually your uh, down at the atomic level, that's the lowest form of component. Lots of simple parts become assemblies which become GAs which become more and more complex but parts themselves can be linked. So in this case we can see that the box IPT is used as a, a starting point if you like for the box derive IPT which then is used on the sub-assemblies and the parent assemblies and the drawings. We can look up downhill, we can look uphill if I click on one of these files for example, I can then go to that folder, it puts me in the right place within Vault. I don't need to know where the folder is, which I would do in Windows Explorer, I've got to go and find it. Yeah. Here I can just jump and bounce backwards and forwards. Now the part the bottom of the tree it doesn't use anything. I can't find this without using a, a, a brute force search. I could spend an hour looking for where this is used. If I've got hundreds of thousands of files, I could spend days trying to find where it's used. Yeah. With Vault, click on the Where Use tab, it's used directly on another IPT and there's a component within an assembly which in turn is used on the general arrangement which in turn is used on its drawing. So I can look uphill and downhill. So in that example there, you need to make a change to that part, you then identify the implications of making that change. Exactly, because I'm going to break box derived. Yeah. Now again, if it's just a chamfer to stop a sharp corner, I can probably make that change everywhere. So I'll make the change and everybody else will accommodate it later on. Yeah. But if I'm drilling a great big hole in the middle of this component for a sensor or a thing for me, I now know I can't drill it in the box derived component because that particular feature isn't required. So I need to create a new component. It's not a revision that can be swapped out here and there. It's a new component and it's a new design for my current as you make modifications, I think the simplest thing I can do here is just literally change the view. It's asking me, do I want to take ownership? If I'm just, I'll say, playing around, I'm doing some experimentation with this file. Yeah, Vault is intended as a replacement to Windows Explorer because you've taken your parts there from Windows Explorer, you've checked them into Vault. Mm -hmm. Vault is the font of all knowledge yes. from a design engineer's point of view. Yeah. You've taken the files from whatever media source through Windows Explorer, you know, drip feeding into Vault as you go along, yep. you do a line in the sand approach perhaps with a blank vault, you just make a start with it, or you bring them in off a memory stick, mm -hmm. or through email attachment from a customer, or from a Dropbox, or wherever, yep. bring it into the vault, and at that point it then gets entered into a, the company's design engineering history of creating, modifying, executing, retiring those parts, yes. assemblies, sub-assemblies, GAs. And now you're, now that it's in the vault, you're now looking at making Changes. Making changes, yeah, tracking yeah. that history. Yeah. Okay. As Explorer, I open a file, I modify it, click save, I've lost the original. Yeah. I open a file, click save, change it again, click save, I've lost yesterday's. So after a week, I've only got one version of that file, but I've made five changes. Yeah. With Vault, um, everything, every change you make and commit back to Vault sits on top of what was already there. It doesn't overwrite what was already there. Mm. So I don't have to check the file out, I can manipulate it and I can experiment, I can what if on a on a drawing, a model, a, a thing, mm. and at the end, nah, that doesn't work. Bug out and just walk away. Yeah. I can take ownership of the file. Which is what you're about to which do Which is what I'm about to do now, check okay. it out. I can do what I want to this file now, but Mike, as the other designer, you've still got access to that data in Vault, but you've got read-only access to it. Mm. So you can carry on using these components in your GA, 
while I'm in the process of rejigging the design and updating it for mine. Yeah, I can view and do stuff too, but you've got the stick at the end of the day. Yeah, when it I'm, comes to that part, you've got the stick. I'm in charge, I'm yeah. the boss. I, I, so I'm going to take ownership of this file. I'm just going to manipulate it basically. I'm just going to change it enough so on a thumbnail that we can see that it's changed. Mm -hmm. And click save. All the data has been saved on my machine because this is another uh, side benefit performance. Hopefully, everybody using Vault work it, sorry, everybody using Inventor in general is working off a server because the server tends to get backed up, whereas your own PC doesn't. Yeah. So, okay. God forbid you lose 100,000 files because of a fire. But at least you've got the tape drive from the day before and you can restore it after a period in the way you've got. You check out, you've got your history, you check back in and the, the performance of the, the system, because we're running off my own computer, it's the fastest my computer will ever be. So I get the data off the server in the first thing in the morning, I work on my machine during the day, and I put it back effectively on the server at night through the act of checking that file back in. So checking it back in at five o'clock at night just before I go on from go on for my tea. And then if we look back into Vault and refresh the files and look at the drawing. In the history tab, we can now see we've got a record of what we've done. Yeah. So over a week we'd have five versions, over a month we'd have 25 versions, whatever it happens to be. We can always go back and grab that file from last week. I took a design decision that turned left, I should have turned right. So I can take a step back, grab the data from a previous point in time, and then go off at a tangent yeah. using that as my, my starting point. And it won't remove the latter versions after that. No, no, no. no. I... Just go back a few skips, and that yeah. then becomes the, the current yeah. version. True. So the history is the biggest because it understands and it doesn't lose any data. Now once we've got a file that we're happy with, and I then print that piece of paper, give it to somebody, they sign it, and the shop floor goes and makes it. Well the issue is, is it the right one? A piece of paper sat on somebody's desk, there's no guarantee that actually that's the one I should be printing. Yeah, that's, that's the one I should be working on. Mm. So this is where we move on to something like the, um, do I have the right version of this file? Do I have the authority to change this file? Because it's a permissions thing. If I believe as a cab guy that I've finished with this file, I'm going to change the state, flick it over to review, for example, and I can see in black and white through Vault that that file is available now for, for Mike, my boss, to review it and decide whether it's good, bad or indifferent. It also locks the file so that I can't change it. If I give a piece of paper to somebody and they don't get around to uh, reviewing it for a week, I'm doing a week's worth of work on that file. Actually, what gets signed off a piece of paper and what gets printed the current drawing are different so by locking the file when it goes to review basically what it means is even if it takes Mike a month to get around to reviewing it kind of what is reviewing it what is reviewing in paper is what's on the cab machine mm. when he then says yeah it's good because he does because everything's right first time we can release that file now because this is a GA the general arrangement drawing this particular setting says, well, if you're going to release the drawing, do you want to release the parts and assemblies as well? Is Mike just checking the piece of paper or is he checking all the CAD models? For this, for this particular setup, the system wants everything in that drawing to be released as well. That's an option. So what I'll do, I'll just bring, on, bring that on and then I will include all its dependents. So we can see everything is there. Then we can make that... Uh, put everything else into review at the same time and then we'll go again and we can put everything to release at the same don't time. Don't click go yet. Don't click go. Just a quick note in as well as we're going through this in terms of traceability and ah, reasons yes. why you're checking it in and checking it well, checking it out and then checking it back in. Comments. Comments. Absolutely. We can we can put in writing why I changed that file. Yeah, at the bottom right there. Yeah. So that's either defaulted as you can see there to a standard text line just to complete something there released to manufacturing or you could expand on it you could change it what you want, you want there, to reason. yeah but yeah that's just basically a traceability point of view so can you explain why you had to do that what you did yes click ok this file now becomes released if you're using vault professional um, because it's a licensed product you've got to pay for each user you can install on as many machines in the business as you want but if you've got five licenses only five people can use it at any one time one of the benefits of Vault Professional is you also get a thin client. It's a, a free read-only access opportunity to the Vault. It runs through a, an internet software. Intranet. Intranet. It doesn't go out to the wide world and come back in. You're not sharing data with anybody. Yeah. It just dials directly into your server 
and all the internal people will see that. Um, Windows, uh, Microsoft Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, just your internet software of, of choice. And it's a read-only um, view. With a normal setup, a released file would then become viewable to document consumers, the shop floor. So you yeah. can have a number of terminals on the shop floor that are, are wired in. They can print their own drawings then. They'll see them if they're released, and if they're not released, they won't see them. Yeah, this so, is all about really sharing the design with the right people at the right, at the right time. time and the right stage of the process. So Absolutely. Production aren't printing off work in progress stuff. Exactly. Yeah, working. Well, design off, design enjoy guys aren't opening up release drawings and trying to retweak them when they shouldn't be doing yeah. it. The so, drawing, uh, the, 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 the revision, the, uh, the state of the drawing work in progress released can be written onto the drawing itself. So if you've got a piece of paper on your desk that says released version 5, yeah. And you just take a quick look into the Vault client just before you manufacture it, and he says, "Hold on, it's released version 10. It's been through a, a, a life cycle change. Somebody's added something to it. I now know I'm looking at the old piece of paper. Scrunch it up, put it in the recycling bin, print another copy, mm -hmm. and away you go. Yeah. Um, it keeps track of revisions as well. So if we decide actually there's a change that needs to be made to this file, we can change the state. We'll put everything back into working progress. At which point the CAD guys can edit the file." You can see there that it automatically bumps to revision B. So as well as re managing the versions of the file, the history, what yeah. did I do last week to kind of go back and, and retrieve that data, it manages the revisions of the file. Drawing office, me and you, Mike, we care about the versions because we're working on that file day in day out. Yeah. The bigger, the, the, the wider business cares about the revisions because that's the one that gets manufactured. Mm -hmm. I can create 50 versions of a file before it ever gets sent to manufacture at issue one or revision yeah, it's basically no. tweaking. Yeah, tweaking. Absolutely. Yeah. So w the, the wider business is concerned more with the revision yeah. of, of the file. So yeah. the right people get the right data at the right time. Yeah. Same thing, by the way, carried across on Pro with the Thin Client. Because if you're logging into the, you, you, you open up the Thin Client through the web browser, you don't need to install anything. It doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't consume a license yeah. from the pool. But you log in using your own username and password credentials that we set up in the background when we set up the vault in the first place. Yep. And and during the admin stage when we're setting it up, we speak to the right stakeholders to identify what version, what level of files, what state of files you have access to view or print or edit or anything. Well, like I'll that. just pull them out. With the thing client, it's read only. Yeah. So you can decide. But you can see the release stuff. Yeah. Shop floor only see the released files, whereas uh, the managing director, who doesn't have CAD anywhere on his machine, yeah. he's not a draftsman, he's a, he's a businessman, yeah. he can see the work in progress files, can't yeah. do anything with them beyond printing it and viewing it, mm. but different people can see different files at a different point, but as far as the thin client's concerned, it's all read on. Yeah. If you want to make the edits, if you're a CAD draftsman, you're going to have a seat of a full-blown thick client of Vault, and that gives you the read write and modify abilities. Mm -hmm. Once we've gone through the revision process of a, a file, we can then move into items. It's, it's not everything that we put into a design is actually drawn in CAD. I draw a, I draw a mechanism, a model and mechanism, all the steel is there, mm -hmm. but I don't draw lubricant or paint or spec sheets or grease. Yeah. There's lots of things that go into a design that the wider business needs to concern, concern itself with that I, as a CAD draftsman, don't concern myself with. I, I don't model the grease. But when the components are ordered, the bill of materials is worked through, grease needs to be taken into consideration. Yeah. So what we can do, we can itemize something. So what we, we actually manage, oops, hello. That was accidental, but it proves a point. I've just moved my assembly folder from the simple level into the drawings level. <laughs> just so as you know, there is a tick box that we can say, bring up a, are you sure? You want dialogue, to do that. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Mine's switched off at the moment, so it let me without asking. But I haven't broken anything in Windows Explorer. I would have broken that and been panicking. I don't know where everything is. But Vault has already gone into every file in the assemblies folder and done what it needs to do to rejig all those links, so everything still points to the right place. So when you open it up in Inventor, for example, it doesn't say I can't find the file. Yeah. It just it already knows that the thing it's looking for is in drawings assemblies instead of just drawings. Well done for making a mistake there. Yes, I didn't mean to do it. I'll be brutally honest with you. So I'm just going to put that back where it was. A slip of the mouse finger. Okay, so we've got the general arrangement, which basically contains everything. 
because it's been through a, a work in progress, a, a, a life cycle from work in progress to review to release, we can see we've got a history of that file and we can see who's making those changes so we can track who's doing what and when. I'm going to add this file to an item. Basically what this means is it, beyond the file management, we're now looking at the uh, project management. This thing that we design as a business has CAD files associated to it. It could also have Greece, it could have a spec sheet, there's three different PDF files that are attached to it. The spares, in the CAD file I'm only going to put three nuts, bolts and washes in because that's what I need to make the component. Mm. But routinely we ship a bag of two nuts, bolts and washers yes, it's a global as spares. Bomb. It's a global bomb, exactly. It's not just the CAD bomb. That, and that's the difference. The CAD bomb tells me I need three to make it. Mm. The global bomb, the shipping bomb, says I need three to make it and one more and, to be spare. And, and a couple of Allen keys. And a couple of Allen keys. And a bob of glue. A bob of, exactly, that's the thing. With Vault Basic, it understands that this file uses. So my top level assembly will use nut, bolt, washer. But it won't tell me how many. Mm. When we get into the Vault Pro level, we've got to build materials and it will tell me how many of everything that I need. So I'll just make these two rows visible. There we go. And then it tells me, oh, that needs box derived. So this is the same list that we saw effectively earlier on, the uses list. But in this particular case, what this is now telling me is I need one of these, I need three of those, I need one of the other. So somebody that's not related to the CAD department purchasing can fire up Vault, log in, and they can see, right, how many of what do we need to order? we can look and find the long lead tag components, we can look at the stuff that we've got in stock and we know that by the time I've ticked everything on that list, we've ordered enough of everything, we can then go and manufacture it. Mm. It's worth noting at this stage as well, obviously appreciating time constraints that we've got at the moment, we can spit this list out in a format that can then be sent across to ERP systems, yeah. and we filtered into sort of finance systems that will accept any type of uh, table-based data. Yeah, CSV, that type yeah. of thing, text like file. Costings and the like. Mm -hmm. There are, there are um, uh, although they cost extra, there, there are uh, official links to uh, third-party ERP systems. Yeah. SAP, for example, mm -hmm. um, that doesn't come in the box. But out of the box, uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a simple install of Vault Professional, mm -hmm. you've got your export button, there's a text file, yes. imported at the other end. And then you can merge the information. Yeah. So, um, right. one other thing that was on that list: uh, recording a change is complete. Now, that's more your engineering change. Yeah. Your ECOs. So passing a part through a way it's been released, mm -hmm. it's gone to site. Either the installer has been on site and has rung in and says, "Jeff, we've got a problem. This is too too short, too long, too wide, whatever. It yeah. won't go through the door. Mm -hmm. It needs updating." Or customers come back kicking off because something's not right and it's not it's not to stay. Yeah. And something needs changing as a and again as a business process after a file has been released and sent to customer. Yeah. From an audit point of view, that's critical because you've got to check. You've not only got to check for your own for yourself sake, mm -hmm. but from an audit point of view as well, if an auditor comes in and asks how many changes were made against that part and why, you've got that record there. Yeah. You? So just very quickly Matt, summarise up the ECO process basically. So I can create an engineering change order Everywhere we've got information, you can put comments in for every step of the process. So yep. you, it depends on, on how much information. War and Peace versus the pamphlet, it's entirely up to you. Yep. So engineering change order, numbers automatically generated. And this can be done on any item. Yeah, any in item in the system. It can be a Word doc. Absolutely, it's not just a design file, GA, uh, sub assembly, whatever. Yeah, anything that's in Vault, yep. we can work with. So you've got a general description of what you're doing. We've got the records. It's, although I've added the, G, uh, the change order to the GA, item it understands that that's going to pull in a lots of other bits as well yeah because they're all linked and related plenty of comments files in question because the item itself isn't the file the item is the record of the thing the thing might be a file but the thing might also be just this virtual thing in the ether that is represents Greece or represents PDF could be a real PDF. yeah I think it's wrong these are the files that would need to be changed were I to action this ECO yeah routing Routing, right, anybody can request a change. Shop floor, guy on the site, finds there's a problem, he can request the change and put a problem, you report it. Somebody puts it into the system and it just gets put in the system. Then somebody's got to say, actually, yes, that's the problem. Oh, don't, don't talk wet, 
it's fine. Yeah. Uh, a qualified person says, yes, make that change. Then a CAD person makes the change. Mm. Then another qualified person approves the change. And you go through that step. You can set up your routing list. If it's a simple spelling mistake, I can create it, I can approve it, I can make the change. If it's a business critical million pound change to that design that's going to affect everything we ever do, everybody in the business is going to be on this routing list. Because mm. I want to do it, the management says yes it's good, finance says yes we can afford it, managing director says yes we can get it out in time. Yeah. So different routing lists basically say who can do it, can it be done, who can do it, who can authorise it and who can uh, pass it through the system. So these two examples here, you've got those two there, you select administrator and that status. Change requester, yeah. they're the people that ask for the change, administrator, they can go through the process of setting up the ECO approver, did it work? Yeah. Reviewer, is it good enough? Responsible engineer, that's the person who actually made the change in CAD. And then we've got where we are up to. Now yeah. this is a, a good visual clue. Anybody can create it. So I'm going to create it. Yeah. So you get visual feedback of where it's up to in the process for each exactly. ECO. And each that's ECO is uniquely numbered. Yes. So. so with a comment. So we've now got an engineering change order in the system. So number four there. So let's have a look at that. We'll just edit that go up to the status open now my boss reviews this and says yes it's worth a change or no in which case we'll cancel it even if we cancel it the record of the request is in the system so if it gets requested week after week after week there's something wrong even if we can't put our finger on it mm -hmm. we should get around to changing it if it gets requested and actually yet yeah, it's a good one we'll submit that that gets submitted and at that point it's in work we can set the system up, send an email then to the res the responsible engineer mm. to say, oh, you've got a job to do this morning. Yeah. You need to get onto this ECO, grab these files and, and do something with them. And, and, and it appears on their work list down there. Yeah. So there you go, just refresh my screen. So ECO, because I'm logged in as an administrator, bottom right hand corner, it's easy telling me down there, oh, yeah, like, a, like an email type thing. Yeah. Well, this is Vault that's doing that. If I click on that, it puts me through to the right place. So because it's in work I can check the files out, make the change, everybody's happy and then when I finish my job I can put it through to review so the boss then looks at it again and at that point you can approve it and go make it, it's closed, it's done and dusted, wipe your hands of it, get on with the next bit you can reject it, mm -hmm. go and rejig the file again but importantly you can see where it's up to in the, in the scheme of things like with the work in progress review released life cycle of the drawing if I print a piece of paper, pick a piece of paper that says width don't touch it on the shop floor because mm. it's not ready yet. If it says released, you're fine, but check it in vault in case you're looking at released revision A and we're now on released revision B. Without this, with Windows Explorer, it just says it's a file and I don't know where we're up to in the scheme of things. By the time we finish with this, I'm just going to fast track this. Uh, let's edit that again one more time and I'm going to put it through to um, approve. Job's been done, everybody's happy, and then I'm just going to uh, close that change order so that nobody else picks up on it and does the job. Yeah. So by keeping track, we, you know, at this end of Vault Professional, we, we move beyond the drawing office slightly here, this becomes more information, it, it's it's not document management anymore, it's not file management, it's uh, idea management, the, the, the thing we make as a business management, because it deals with things that are, are not necessarily... Um, real things in the drawing office. You've got your bill of materials so people can go out and buy enough stuff. You've got your ECO so people know that they're making the right stuff. Anything else Nothing to add? Nothing beyond no. that, Chief, no. to be honest with you. Again, this is really sort of purposes to just go through the nuts and bolts to it. Really quick, let's flick back to my slide deck. Because what's new? Vault 2018. Yes. You were telling me you were telling me some look at some information. Yeah, um, I think for the for the inventor user. Well, I think one of the big ones in uh, Vault is the fact that we can show the Vault browser, which we could do before. Uh, are we still on there? I think we're frozen. So oh, yeah. There you go. There we go. We've got the Vault browser, but we always had to flip one between the other. You couldn't see your CAD data on the Vault browser at the same time. Yeah. Well, now we can, because you can uh, undock them or dock them. You can move it to the side of the screen. If you're looking at oh, okay. dual monitors, you can stick everything on one monitor, you can have a thousand and one different browsers. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to deal with the Vault side of things and the Inventor at the same time. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Any CAD. Any CAD 
is a cracking piece of technology that allows Inventor to deal with any CAD file. Uh, Pro-E, Katia, SolidWorks, uh, Solid Edge now in 2018. Yes, sir. Um, step files. Rather than converting the file into a bunch of Inventor equivalents and then using those Inventor files, customer supplier send me one step file or one Katia file, whatever, that represents an assembly. I end up with a thousand Inventor files I've got to manage. Now, with any CAD, we can just drop the step file directly into Inventor. We don't have an X number of additional files to manage. With uh, Vault 2018, it now understands that there's a step file that's linked into this assembly. So the where used and uses list includes the step file, the CAD file, the any CAD file. So we can keep the management of lots of files down because we don't have both lots of files converted. And we, we can understand that uh, if I get a new version of that step file and drop it in Vault, I can see where it's used and is it going to break anything. Right. Um, I've got to Vault folder. Um, we can always, from, from uh, Vault, we can right-click on a file and open. We can go the other way. We can right-click on a file and go to a Vault folder and it will fire up a Vault client showing us that file. So I can bounce between CAD and Vault, Vault, CAD, CAD, Vault, without having to go and find it myself. Right. What else? A couple of things on there. Again, from it, from Vault, you can insert directly into the current CAD assembly. Fine. Large assemblies and drawings 2018. Uh, Autodesk have done a lot of work. Increasing performance, decreasing time it takes to deal with uh, large assemblies and drawings. And that's an ongoing thing with Autodesk, and they're making a lot of improvements. Uh, PDF. If you've got Vault Pro, you can spit out PDFs when you check files in or release files. Uh, an automated process rather than the drawing office making their own PDFs that then go on a, a, vault, a, a, a company server somewhere for, for the sales department to print. You can automate the process and have the PDF themselves created at, at, point of, uh, at the point where the file gets released instead of somebody having to do it themselves later on. I've got a question. Yes, sir. If I'm an engineer, create a part, I've sent it up to you, senior engineer, for approval. Mm -hmm. Is there a way such that I can receive an email to say that it's been approved or in, in such a way? Is it, it's, done, it's done through the ECO process, isn't it? Yes, done through the ECO process. Plus, the fact that you've got the, um, the, the vault client, yeah. whoever reviews it, releases it, moves it through the life cycle later, B to C, yeah. the, 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 the relevant user is always noted. Right, okay, um, ah, so you can see that anyway. If right. you look at the, the, my vault, uh, just grab a history of any particular file, make sure that that's come back on there, we can see. Although yeah. I'm the one doing all the work there, you can see created by. Yeah. So by interrogating Vault, you can see who reviewed it, who released it, who was working in progress in it, etc. Um, one nice thing, actually, that a similar thing, we do have the opportunity to come, um, share view. So if, 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 the, if the person reviewing it, or the customer, for example, who you're, or you, who you're making this product for, they don't have access to your network, therefore they don't have access to your vaults. Um, one of the things we can now do is share a view. So basically, I right click on a file, I share the view, it generates a, a web file in the background, which is hosted on Autodesk servers, but it's a snapshot of the graphics, but it's not the file itself. Right. Yeah. So um, if it was a 3D file, you could spin the file, but what you can't do is see inside it. it. There isn't enough information in that file to do anything. You can't pinch the data, mm -hmm. which is what people are concerned about. Yeah. But once we've got that shared, I'm just going to fire up the internet, paste in the link, and then this will go on. Yeah, I don't need to see all that well. This is now the internet-based sh shared view. It's not the original file. It's not editable. But somebody can review this on the other side of the planet. So a customer down the road, they can look at the file. They can say, yeah, I'm happy with that. We're basically collaborating with it. With, with, you can know, you do a bit of measuring. You can look at the properties, etc. Mm -hmm. If it was a 3D file generated, you could spin the model. Uh, well, that's all been generated through uh, just right clicking on the file in Vault and saying, right, share this, send the link to the person in question. Yeah. They don't need access to your original data then. Think of it as 
akin to Dropbox, but it isn't Dropbox. Uh -huh. um, it uses the A360 technology in the background. The Autodesk viewer, as you see top left there, is capable of, of actually viewing a whole host of, of files. And it's this data, although not the real file, is still held on a secure server mm. out there somewhere. I don't know where it is. You don't know where it is. But neither does anybody else. And if you don't send anybody else that link, nobody else will get, any, get access to it. Right, that's good. That's good to know. Does Vault require certain hardware or software? Um, the Vault client will... Software is the Vault. Yeah, right, which OS, is what we're OS. looking on. Um, we'll work on the, on the machine that Inventor works on. As far as the Vault server side of things is concerned, the OS needs to be 2012 or above. The SQL version needs to be, again, 2012 or above. If, you're, if you've got or planning on putting a lot of data in, if your database gets bigger than 10 gig, you'll need a paid for version of SQL. Yeah. But if you've only got 10,000 files in Vault, you probably won't have a database that's anywhere near 10 gig, in which case the free SQL Express that is downloadable or shipped with Vault server itself anywhere yeah. is more than enough. Will do. Um, again, if, if, if you're a big business with lots of files and lots of users, there's benefits to running a paid for SQL. It can deal with more memory, more processes, more concurrent users, etc. Uh, but there is a hard limit if your database gets bigger than 10 gig. The database is the information about the files, not the files themselves. You could have yeah, the file stuff would be huge. Yeah, you could have 500 gigabytes worth of files, tens, hundreds of thousands of files. But if you're not actually pulling a lot of information from each one, mm. the database, the information about those files could be small. Yeah. But that 10 gig is a hard limit. Mm. Uh, if, if you're going to go over that, you will need a, a yeah. paid for version of SQL. Yeah, the database being the thing that tracks the links and dependencies. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Not the file store itself, because that can be a lot bigger than 10 gigs. So, yeah, don't panic about that. So yeah. I've left my details on the end of there. For a general phone number, just ask for me, my email address. If you've got any questions coming in on the back of this, so uh, hope you've enjoyed it, hope you've got a use out of it. Please get in touch if you need anything from me after that, any questions that we've not asked or answered. And, uh, yeah, we will speak to you all very soon. Thank you very much indeed.